mind the don't mind the Tharp brothers as I'm turning to stand up, stand up for Jesus. All right, 322. Let's go ahead and stand together, if you would, please. We're singing Stand Up for Jesus. I do believe it's all three verses this time. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Live high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord in us in prayer. Lord, you think of a day which you give us to be able to come to your house and hear your tongue preach upon through the pastor gives us a message today that our hearts and minds be able to miss you have for us. You supply it to our lives and make we live better for you and better to serve you. We just give thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Good to see you this morning. And uh, like I said, I know we have some other folks who are going to be joining us here shortly. And uh, still a little odd, isn't it? Still trying to work it all out, get it all together. And uh, this thing is just different. Can't say much more than that. But this is Memorial Day weekend. It's supposed to be kicking off summer. But I don't know if y'all notice the temperature outside. It certainly, it certainly is not here yet. And so maybe it'll arrive by Monday or Tuesday or so, but it is not here today. And we're going to close these doors here shortly after some folks get in. I know some of you guys are cold, and uh, we got the fan going. We'll have some air circulating. And uh, after a few minutes here, we'll let this air get in and out for now. Uh, just a few quick announcements. Um, not a whole lot going on other than what I've already mentioned uh, briefly Wednesday night and then, of course, this morning in Sunday school hour. Um, don't forget to RSVP each week. Thank you to everybody that did. And, of course, we have plenty of room, but I know we're missing a family that will be here. They say they'll be here uh, momentarily here. And then, of course, Brother Rich is out of town. He'll be back next week. And so we're right at about what we can properly social distance with. And then there are several folks online. Let's see, I've got seven different people that are online uh, that have joined in. And so I, I know there's homes and different things, so there might be more than one person in a house, of course. So I've got folks online. Thank you all for joining us. But just don't forget the RSVP about uh, being here in person. And then giving online, don't forget about that at our web, through our webpage, nlbcfcalvert.com. Go to the Give button, and you'll be able to give online, or you can mail in giving to P.O. Box. For those of us that are here, there's a basket in the back, no touch. So on your way out, if you want to drop something in the basket, I would, I would encourage you to put it in an envelope first and then drop it in that basket on your way out if you'd like. Or you can mail it in, go, on, go online. Several people have gone online. We thank you for that. And so just know that you have options there. Don't forget about Lord's Supper. Planning to do that soon. And then uh, that's the survey. Thank you all for the feedback on the survey. A uh, good amount of people uh, fed, gave feedback, at least 10 if I'm not mistaken, and I only sent out about like 17 or 18. So more than half the people that I sent it to uh, have completed it. If you've not completed it, feel free to do so. Give us some more feedback. Give us some more info. And that way we know, um, that way we can just keep in touch uh, with your feelings and how you're feeling about the matter. I might send out another one at some point after we get feedback from this one. I might go ahead and put that out there. Uh, but for right now, thank you so much for all that you did to give feedback on it. It was good information. I've gotten back some good information. And uh, I'll share more about the results on Wednesday. 
I'll share the results, give some more people some time to chime in, and so I'll, I'll share more results on Wednesday night. And then I made mention in Sunday School Hour, but it's, it's, it's camp time, and it is youth conference time. Every time this time of year, school lets out, and uh, school comes to a wind, and then we have camp, and then we have uh, youth conferences and different things. And so because we're probably not traveling to any youth conferences, we have the ability to view them in person here while some of them virtually stream them. And so we're planning on, for at least one of the two major conferences that we know of, uh, being First Baptist of Hammond, their youth conference that they're going to share will be in the month of July. And so I want you to know that I'm planning on having the kids here in the evening services for those nights, which I believe will probably be a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. And that way, those evenings we'll have here, we'll have a screen up here by then. Uh, we're going to have a screen up here by then. i, I got to buy one, but once I buy one, we'll have a screen up here by then. I intend to have a screen up here next week. Don't forget, next week is our anniversary service. And uh, next week was supposed to be a big day, a photo day for us. We are going to postpone the photo day, but we're still going to celebrate as a church our anniversary. And so there's not a whole lot of hubbub that's going into that. We're not going to go ahead and just you know have a big shindig, but we are going to take a moment and recognize it and appreciate it. I have a special video that I'm going to share with the family, uh, our church family here. And those of you that are online, hopefully you'll be able to see it as well. I think I can figure all that out. If not, I'll get somebody much smarter than I to put it all together. Uh, but we'll have something on the screen here, and we'll just kind of show you where we were two years ago to where we are now and kind of some of the memories we've made over that. So look forward to that. We'll have that uh, coming next week. So the photo itself, the professional photographer, we're going to postpone for a year. We are going to try to do it again next spring. Okay, so there's a number of reasons behind that. I am still looking forward to getting back to normal here soon. I'm not saying tomorrow or next week. But here soon so that we can do some of the things that we typically enjoy if situations allow. So I'm planning on our typical, man. We like to do chili cook-off. We like to do our Veterans Day. We love to do our seafood boil. Man, that seafood boil has been a hit for the last two years. And I, I live in Maryland. I don't know about y'all, but I like seafood. And if I can create a reason to enjoy seafood, I'm going to do it. And so I'm trying to enjoy seafood, but um, we usually have our seafood boil Labor Day weekend uh, that Sunday. And I'm not sure about all that. More to come on that, of course. I'm hoping to do those things. And then our chili cook-off last year, Bobby stole $100 from everybody. <laughs> Who'd have thought Bobby would win the chili cook-off? But Bobby won. Uh, Steve's belly was busting at the seams because he ate 600 bowls of chili. I mean, we had all those little cups there that were just full and just bite after bite. Camden, poor guy, he was one of the judges. And he thought he had to eat the entire cup instead of just taste it so my man was sitting here just filling up on one cup and he put it down and he fill up on another cup and he put it and there was like eight or ten chilies or so and he's just he's like i don't think i'm gonna make it and steve finally chimed in he said you don't have to eat the whole thing but you just taste it oh really man and so anyway we like that stuff we enjoy that i'm hoping to be able to do those things i can't promise you that we'll be able to do those things but i'm hoping to but that being said photo day is going to be postponed until this time next year, spring of next year. I hate that. I don't like that. Uh, we still might find other ways to take pictures of our property and get them uploaded and things like that. Uh, but as far as a promotion, as far as having a professional photographer, uh, we're holding off for this time, okay? Just giving you feedback on that. I think that's all of my announcements. Am I missing anything? Uh, we are meeting Wednesday night. I talked to our, our men on Wednesday night this past week. We are voting this Wednesday coming on taking on some more missionaries and adding missionary support if you're interested uh, in knowing that and so praise the lord our missions giving has been up at the church we've sustained it for a good period of time and we're able to take on more missionaries and we are going to go by faith on some of them and so we're going to take on a new missionary i hope if we can agree to do that which i think we will uh, but and then also we're going to increase some of the support for the men that we're already for the families that we are already uh, supporting so FYI on that, if you're interested, uh, tune in Wednesday night. You might be able to hear what we're talking about in that aspect. All right, I think that's all my announcements. If I forgot, I'll mention something else here shortly. Before we get into the song, let me just kind of put us in the moment of what it is. This is Memorial Day weekend, and uh, this is one of my favorite weekends of the year, and for a number of reasons. But let us not forget why we have a three-day weekend. And it's certainly not because folks just wanted to get off work, although some intentions may have been that way years ago when they put this practice into place. 
It is certainly not how we recognize it today. And so let's not forget, even in this time of few festivities, even in this time of, of, of not being together, so to speak, we often take time and reflect upon the, the, the freedoms we've been afforded in our nation because of the sacrifices paid for men and women of our country. And they've given the ultimate sacrifice. And so I just want to prepare you as we get into the message this morning. I, 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 last year I gave a big speech and I had, uh, I had a long, uh, you know, just something nice to say. And I don't want to get in the habit of having to do that every single year. But I also don't want to forget. And I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to push it aside for sure. Uh, this is a special, special weekend. I hope you take time to reflect on that. I hope you take time with your family. Uh, if you do it in person, if you do it over the phone, if you write letters, if you call folks, whatever it is. And I know for, for some people, this is a very hard weekend. It's a very hard weekend for a lot of people. And uh, you just keep that in mind. You pray for them. Pray for your family members and friends. If you know of somebody that's suffering this time of year with heartache and pain, if you'd write to them, if you'd meet, give them something on behalf of our church. Let them know you're praying for them. Let them know you're here for them. A number of different things that we can do. And so I wanted to take a minute and just kind of remind us about what this weekend is all about. To our men and women that serve currently, thank you for that, that have served previously. And now, although you gave sacrifice, you, it was not necessary for you to give the ultimate sacrifice. We're just as thankful, of course. Uh, but just reflect upon those that have given the ultimate sacrifice and remember those that are hurting this time. And I'll say a lot more about that. You'll hear it coming up in the message. Let's go ahead and sing another song. We're going to sing There's Power in the Blood, song number 50. Is anybody too hot or too cold? Hot? 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 Brother Bobby, let's go ahead and kick the heat off. And then if it gets chilly, we'll close the doors. Okay? Uh, you can turn it down to like, I don't know, I don't know what it's on, a few degrees. But whatever it's blowing now, let's not have it blowing at all. All right, Power in the Blood, song number 50. Let's stand together, shall we? There's power in the blood. Amen for that blood. Let's sing first, second, and last together. chapter 22 this morning in verse 20. Matthew, Mark, Luke you'll find in the New Testament. Luke chapter 22 and verse 20. We know this verse. We associate this verse because it's proper with the Lord's Supper. What some would call communion. 
Lord's Supper, there's really no... I understand the difference between the two, but at, you know, I, I get it. It is what it is. So I don't, it doesn't bother me if you refer to it as communion or the Lord's Supper. But if I say what communion is, you know what that is. If I say what the Lord's Supper is, you know what that is. And so this verse does apply to the Lord's Supper. It's often gone over uh, at time of Lord's Supper, and it's very well possible that we'll go over it together when we have our Lord's Supper here in a couple weeks on Wednesday night. But just one verse this weekend, as we think about Memorial Day weekend, and I want you to keep Memorial Day weekend in mind as we read the verse. And Luke chapter 22 and verse 20. Uh, verse 20. Actually, let me make sure. Let me make sure I gave the right verse there because I, I thought. Yeah, Luke chapter 22 and verse 20. Likewise, also, the cup after supper saying, this cup, oh, excuse me, back up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 19 and 20. 19 and 20. I got two verses. I lied. I thought a second. I said, wait a second. I'm missing something here. And he took bread, verse 19, and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Sound familiar? This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you. I want you to pay attention to the two phrases there at the end of verse 19 and at the end of verse 20. This do in remembrance of me, and then talking about that blood as we sang the power of the blood, which is shed for you. There's two people in all of mankind that ever gave their life for another, the soldier and Jesus Christ. And so we're going to talk about keep in remembrance. This morning's message will be titled, Keep in in remembrance. We'll have prayer, we'll have a special, and we'll get into the message this morning. Let's pray. Father, we certainly need your hand. God, there is nothing of my own power, of my own spirit, of my own volition that can be beneficial to these good people this morning. Father, I am begging now for your hand upon this message. I'm begging now for your hand upon this service. Lord, that you would bless this special to be sung. God, that it would touch the hearts of people. And Father, not only that it would touch the hearts of the people, but that it would stir us, Lord, for the preaching to come of thy word. Lord, I do pray that you would work in our hearts and in our minds. God, I pray that this would not just be another Sunday. I pray that this would just not be another day in a pew. God, but this would be a time of reflection together. Not only upon those that have given their lives for us, Lord, but upon our Savior and the life that he gave for us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Father, would you please use this service, use this time? God, I ask you to work through me, as only you can do, Lord. Help me to be a conduit for thee. Please, get yourself all the attention you so deserve through the sermon, through the message, and Lord, just through the, the song today, the service in general. In Christ's name I ask it. Amen.
is, I think, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that the first time y'all sung that yourselves? That was a good job. Excellent. Good job. I hope you reflect on that this weekend. I hope you take some time tomorrow. I hope you have some quiet time. I hope you have some personal time. And I hope you just not only reflect upon uh, the great sacrifices paid, but what God has afforded you. What God has afforded you. You didn't have to be born here. You could have been born anywhere else. You didn't have to be made in the United States of America. And so, you know, I, I'm getting into my sermon already, but praise the Lord. Take some time tomorrow and be thankful. If you haven't already, I know you guys. I know you guys are thankful. I, I get that. Um, I, I'm not by any way stretch or of the imagination leading into the fact that you're not thankful. I'm not saying that at all. I just want to make sure we take time and be thankful. Let me pray one more time. God, help me, please, I pray. Lord, use the message, please. In Christ's name I ask it for thy sake. Amen. Anybody too hot, too cold before we keep moving? Too hot, too cold? Anybody... If you want me to close the doors, raise your hand. Close that door. Brother Bobby, can you close that door for me? Sure. However, you've got it rigged up. I'll give him just a second to do that. Uh, forgive us. You know, times are a little bit different. We're trying to keep ventilation here, making sure that, uh, you know, from what we've learned and what we've studied is that the, you, the more spores you get, the worse off you are. If we can keep that air flowing, the less risk we're in. I don't think we're in any risk at all. But I still want to be safe. I still want to be mindful. I still want to be cautious. And so at the same time, uh, we tried our best to keep air flowing. Sunday school hour, uh, we, we froze Miss Julie out there. I want to say thank you to Julie and Tim for visiting today and David being our visitors uh, this morning. And they were with us on Wednesday night and uh, had called last week, had saw the cops outside, uh, which you didn't know and I didn't know, but apparently we had cops right here outside of the parking lot while we were having church. And so as they were leaving uh, where they were, they saw cops and said, and Miss Julie made this statement. She said, they must be doing something right. And so I said, I told her, I said, well, I hate to burst your bubble, but the cops didn't bother us. They didn't mess with us. Uh, we were fine. We were okay. And, but anyway, so she, they got to looking into our church, and they said, I think we want to visit. And I said, man, I'd love to have you. And so here they are. And so anyway, getting into the message this morning, I just want to take some time to say thank you. Thank you for coming. And, uh, of course, to our folks, thank you for coming. For those of you tuning online, I know it's difficult. It's different. Make sure all the kids are tucked away quietly, duct tape over their mouths, hands tied in their laps, and uh, all the dogs are put away, and the dogs not or the cats not chasing catnip across the hallway while y'all are tuned in. And just make sure you focus in this morning on the message. This time of year, I can't help but think on prices paid and sacrifices given. Here in Luke, we see the Last Supper and Christ telling his disciples to participate in such a way that he'd be remembered. He made the statement, this do in remembrance of me. God ordained that there'd be a specific time that the church would come together collectively in remembrance of the broken body and the blood shed for us. He gave that ordinance to the church to be regularly done and to remember him in this way. A memorial is a lasting impression or an item of remembrance. This weekend annually is a time of that reflection. It's a time of thanks. It's a time to recognize honor and duty. This weekend annually is a time that we recognize in heartbreak and somberness the sacrifice of many. Yet because of that very sacrifice, we are also able to celebrate and recognize the liberties and freedoms. Mm -hmm. One can't help but think about such sacrifices. For the last 12 years, my home, at our house, we've hosted a Memorial Day cookout. This will be the first year in the last 12 years that we did not do so. There's a number of reasons for that. It was not simply the virus. It was the fact that we're trying to move. It was the fact that I was not trying to pretty my house up for a whole bunch of people to destroy in a matter of moments. <laughs> But it's something that we do and we hold dear to. Our, our kids' hearts were broken when we told them we weren't having... My heart was broken when I told them we weren't having a Memorial Day cookout. It began with our time in the sailor ministry. We would serve all weekend long beside our brothers and sisters in Christ at the Great Lakes Naval Base there in Waukegan. We would have sailors at our home every Saturday and often on Fridays. 
For over four and a half years, there was barely a Saturday, if a Saturday, I can maybe remember on hand, a handful, out of four and a half years were the Saturdays that I did not have a sailor in my home. In that time, we were able to house over 900 sailors as a family. We had those sailors to minister through. We'd play sports and we'd take them to church. They'd grow with us. One of those sailors was present for the birth of my son. He gave up his station, his duty. He, 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 he illegally did not report back. He was, MI, he was AWOL for a day just to be there for the birth of my child. We would serve all weekend long as a tribute to our service members and friends in recognition of the fallen. On Memorial Day, we would invite people to our home. We'd have such great food there. You know, my wife, she's an amazing cook. This is why I'm fat. So don't blame me, blame the cook. It's not the, it's not the fries, it's the spoon, right? We'd serve all weekend long. We'd have good food there. My wife being an amazing cook, excellent homemaker, tremendous at putting on parties and ensuring that the environment and setting is always just right with plenty to eat and enjoyment to be had. We'd have food and games. We'd have volleyball. We'd have ping pong. We'd have billiards, dart boards, frisbees, horseshoes. Before all that cornhole junk, we had horseshoes, you know, iron horseshoes, you know, men's stuff. Now we just throw a bag full of corn beads. <laughs> We'd come together for a time of enjoyment. But every year, every time, just before we ate, we'd stop. And I'd take a few minutes and I'd remind the folks in attendance as to why we were together. There would never be a time that we just went into enjoying ourselves. It would always be a time of reflection. And if it were not I praying for the food or I praying for the day, I would ask a service member to pray for the food or to pray for the day. I'd remind them of the liberties and the freedoms we were able to share on that day were a result of droves of men and women who paid an ultimate price to afford us such opportunities. I never wanted a day of enjoyment to supersede the purpose of the day. I never wanted to simply gather together for a day of fun without first pausing and giving thanks to those men and women that had paid the price. It just didn't seem right to me to enjoy such liberties without recognizing the cost. I take those same thoughts and I recognize the America in which we live in today. I think about the year 2020. I think about May 24th and 2020. An America that has enslaved itself to selfishness. An America that's forgetful of the past, forgetful of the battles in which not only our forefathers fought, but in which our grandparents fought, and great-grandparents, and in some cases, even our own parents. An America that's ignorant of the cause. An America that's blinded by money and overtaken by greed and corruption. An America that desires to feed the fle of the flesh of men and women who died to afford them freedoms, just for them to use them for their own personal gain. An America that is ravaged with sin. So deep in sin that they can't see hope. They can't see promise. They can't see an end to their misery. Make no mistake about it, America has been preserved thus far by an almighty God for the sake of spreading the gospel. Amen. The only reason America exists the way it does today Amen. is to get the gospel around the world. If it were not for America being the main financier and the main way that God is getting the gospel around the world, I guarantee you America would not exist the way it does today. There's no other reason in which America is still standing other than the fact God is using her to spread the gospel financially and physically across the dying world. There's no doubt that Americans have done our forefathers a disservice, an injustice, in so many ways, as we spit upon the Constitution, in which our very freedoms and liberties were preserved and sealed. There's no doubt that the liberalism and God ungodliness that has crept in, and dare I say overwhelmed our nation, has disgraced the legacies and intents of our forefathers. The liberalism to ignore our Constitution, to take away our freedom to meet together on a Sunday morning. The liberalism to promote the ungodly, to encourage wickedness. The liberalism that they don't even hide any longer. They don't even hide their sin. They don't even put it in the closet. They just bring it out into the forefront. 
the liberalism to intentionally savage the love of a dying Savior. The ungodliness to not only forego the things of God in the nation, but to intentionally wipe God out of every, every public entity. Our nation has become decrepit. It's not busting at the seams. Our nation is crumbling all around us. It's not blowing up. It's crumbling. It's withering away to dust. What our ancestors lived and died for, what they fought for, what they signed up for, was to be able to not only exercise freedom, but to also exercise a way of living in fear of an almighty God. Yeah, that's right. They left the home country to afford you and I the freedom of meeting together on Sunday morning if we so choose. And he allowed us the choice to make that. The rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God, said John F. Kennedy. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Yes, we've been given civil liberties. We've been given rights. But they are not simply by the hands of men. They were afforded to us by the hand of God. That's right. That is why the word unalienable is in there. Because no man can afford it to you or take it from you. Amen. God gave them to us. God afforded them to us. Praise God for men and women who've been willing to lay down their life to protect and defend God-given rights. Yes. Not just a constitution in which man put together, but unalienable rights which were afforded to you and to I by God himself. Amen. The governors, these politicians, who feel they have the right, not we have the right, they have the right to hinder our constitution, to strip us of those freedoms, to have a nation again that would stand up for God, what God has afforded, not simply what man feels they have been afforded. Amen. It is not a matter of their opinion on what I've been afforded. Mm -hmm. It is a matter of what God has already afforded me. Right. These lawmakers that believe there should be equal pay and equal distribution, regardless of race, color, or creed, I agree with all the race, color, and creed, but equality is offered to all of us. Mm -hmm. We are all created equal. So equal that one is at liberty and afforded the opportunity to get a job, to labor, to work hard, to save, to plan, to prepare, and to put in as much time and effort as they would like to get ahead in this life. God has afforded us equal opportunity. You have just as much equal opportunity to put in as much sweat equity as I do. And that is your equal opportunity. Socialism has never been the answer. It will never be the answer. Amen. It is not the blueprint that God put forward. Mm -hmm. It is certainly not the blueprint for the prosperity or health of a nation. Right. Socialism is not what our ancestors died for. On, Liberty is what they died for. Mm -hmm. Freedom is what they died for. Opportunity is what they died for. It's, right. mm. it's important. It's necessary. And shall I say it's urgent. For us to keep in remembrance our nation's history in regard to the price paid to afford you and I the liberty of being an American. Yes. There was a price paid afforded for you and I to be an American. Amen. This Memorial Day is certainly a time of reflection and thanks to those men and women. But may it also be a time of reflection and thanks to our sovereign God. Yes, sir. Who bore us into such freedom. God placed us here. God could have chosen to place you as a citizen of any nation. God could have seen fit to place you on the continent of Africa or in the communism of Russia or in the cesspools of any other lost nation. Instead, God chose to place you right here where you are. God has afforded you the privilege, yet huge responsibility of being an American. The Bible says, For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall much be required. If he's afforded us the right, then we have the responsibility mm -hmm. to push forward that right. On this Memorial Day 2020, 
in a pivot of time in our nation's history, at an imposing of civil liberties, let us not forget our freedoms, our American-born freedoms, but let us not also forget our God-given freedoms. The freedom to be free. The freedom to worship. The freedom to honor. The freedom to choose. God never imposed choice upon us. He is always giving us the liberty. He's always afforded us the liberty to choose. You can choose to accept him and you can choose to deny him. And either way, he'll let you do it. So I know he never intended a government to impose choice upon us. If God himself wouldn't impose choice upon us, then obviously he would never ordain a government that would do so. The freedom to know truth. The freedom to receive Christ. The freedom of a moral compass. Knowing right from wrong. A conscience as a guide. A mind to contemplate. A heart to feel. These are things afforded to you that you had nothing to do with. They were given you. And you have them to utilize. We hold our freedom so dear as we should, but all too cavalier in our God-given freedoms. We remember the sacrifices of man only to resent the sacrifices of a Savior. Christ has become an afterthought in our lives. The very one who afforded our life, much like the emotions of ignorant people towards our soldiers, is forgotten and despised. They burn the flag because they don't recognize the cause. And so Christians squander their lives because they don't recognize the cost. Christ has become an afterthought. He's rejected. He's not even second place. Christ barely even makes the list anymore. He might make your list one out of seven days. He might make your list an hour out of however many you're afforded in a week. You do the math. I'm not smart enough. He wants and desires, his wants and desires have become our annoyances and inconveniences. God's wants and desires for our lives have become inconvenient for us. It's been annoying to us. God, why do you keep poking me there? God, why do you keep prodding me there? God, why does the preacher keep preaching on this for me? What in the world is going on? That's it. I give up. Because God annoys us. His preferences irritate us. And so God's an afterthought. Christ is an afterthought. As we see this verse this morning, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. We reflect on sacrifices made by both soldier and God. Remember it was God that repented he had made man. In Genesis chapter 6. In Exodus chapter 32. Yet he gave us a second chance. He could have wiped us all out before we ever got started. But he still. Even after he saw the wicked man. He said. I'll give him another chance. And then got to the point where he said. I'll even give you a rainbow as a covenant. That I will never again destroy you the way I have. God's been good to us. Gracious to us. He gave us a second chance. The, luxury, the luxuries in which he's afforded. Our marriages. Our children. Our jobs. Our hobbies. The food in which we eat. The ground in which we walk. The simplicities of life in which we enjoy. Such a beautiful waterfall in which we can view. A cool evening breeze as it sweeps across the porch. The beauty and fragrance of a flower. The flight of a hummingbird. All these things, these beauties of life, afforded to you and I, not by your hand, That's right. but by God. Oh, yeah. And we just say, just simple, every day, often overlooked graces afforded by a God who never was required or expected to do so. You think about where you were when God made you. You didn't have a thought to think. That's right. He still gave you life. He gave you life without you ever having to say so. Talk about the love of God. Yes, sir. Talk about the love of a God who formed you in the belly, who knew you before your first suck of milk, who knew you at your first cry, who knew you at your first hunger, who knew you at your weakest and most vulnerable of moments, who also knew you on your wedding day, who also knew you at the bedside of the birth of your first child, who knew you at the rise of 
your field. Any promotion you've ever received, whether it be at home or in career, afforded by God. Right. Who knew you at the height of your wisdom? A God who gave when you certainly didn't deserve to be given. I'd like to give you a few ways this morning in which we can keep God in remembrance this morning. I have three simple points. And so you'll know, you'll like to know, I'm already on page four of my notes and I only have five. <laughs> How can we keep God in remembrance this morning? Number one, I'll say this. Erect a place of remembrance. Erect a place of remembrance. I can't help but think about Arlington Cemetery. Such a beautiful place to wander. If you ever get a chance to go, if you've not gone, you should go. It's right down the road, wouldn't take you long. And just walk through the graveyard. And just walk through the eternal flame of a John F. Kennedy. And just see the sacrifices made. I praise God for a Rich Riggins who goes every Veterans Day to lay down wreaths. And then he also is one that goes back to pick them up. Thankful for his heritage. Arlington Cemetery being the ultimate place of remembrance. I think about the beaches at Normandy, the graves there of thousands of soldiers. For me, I think about a place of remembrance in 1996 at a place called Acquire the Fire in Ocean City, Maryland. I think about a place of testimony, a time in which I didn't know what salvation was. A time in which it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. In time in which I didn't know what my destination was. I didn't grasp it. I didn't understand it. But because I was in the right place at the right time. Come on. Yes. And I heard somebody clearly explain the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, and Lord. clearly explain that it's not the works of righteousness. Right. That there's nothing you'll ever be able to do to afford it. But that you have a penalty to pay that you cannot afford. Come on. And Jesus Christ died to pay that penalty. I remember the first place I heard that because I erected a place at that point in time of remembrance Amen. for me. I didn't know what I was getting into. I just knew I wanted what Christ was presenting. Yes. I didn't have a clue what my life held from that point forward, but I knew whatever it was, it was better than what I was already destined yep. to have. Amen. And so I wanted it. Yes. I ask you this morning, where's your place of remembrance? Where did you get born again? Where is that place of remembrance for you in your life that you stop and you can recall and you can reflect the moment where something as big as God came in and changed your life? I know where I was. I didn't understand it, but I know where I was. Where did you get born again? Where did something so big as God come inside of you and change your life forever? We all need a place. Maybe you don't remember the place in which you got saved. That's not a deal breaker with God. It's not necessarily a place in which you have to remember. But, do you remember a place in which you gave your life to Him? Maybe you don't recall where you were when you accepted Christ. Maybe you don't know the exact place in which you were when you asked something so big as God to come in and forgive you a sinner. Maybe you don't remember that. But now at the age that you can recognize and recall, has there ever been a time where you asked him, Lord, be Lord of my life. And God, I give myself up to you. God, it's not about me any longer. I'm so glad that my wife didn't receive the old me. I'm so glad that my kids don't have the old me. Because that old me wasn't worth it. That old me didn't have anything to afford. And the new me still doesn't if it weren't for Christ. Yes, amen. I don't have anything I can give right. if it weren't for Christ. Do you remember a time at an old-fashioned altar that you bowed in humility and thanked Him for all the good He had done? Do you remember a time that you gave your heart to Him? Or has it always been about you? Your opinion. Your feelings. How, how, how you want it all done. You, 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 you. Every child of God needs a place of remembrance right. that they can reflect upon. Yes, 
So how do I keep God in remembrance? I erect a place of remembrance. Next, number two, erect a memory of victory. Erect a memory of victory. Yes, we honor the fallen, but we also celebrate the victories won because of the sacrifice of the fallen. We reflect upon the freedoms gained because of the chains removed in 1776 when 56 men committed treason, knowing that if they were to ever be caught, they'd be tried and hung. We're thankful for their sacrifice. And every July 4th, we hold a memory of victory. Has there ever been a memory made of victory in your life? Maybe a time in which Christ helped you overcome your alcoholism. Maybe a time when God helped you get off of a drug habit. Maybe a time in which Christ mended your broken marriage. Maybe a time in which Christ brought home a wayward son or daughter. The victories that Christ could afford if we would simply erect a memory of victory. A cry out to Christ. Let him, let those thick walls of defense that we have about us that nobody can penetrate. But God certainly is strong enough. And if you don't let him in those walls, he will find a way to break them and you will not enjoy that punishment. So if you keep placing your walls up to keep everyone else out, God says, I have just the weapon for that wall. You need to erect a memory of victory. Have a memory in which you can look back on and say, Christ did that for me. And I'm going to enjoy the freedom in which he's afforded me. Erect a place of remembrance. Erect a memory of victory. And I'm already on my last point. Erect a statue of honor. Erect a statue of honor. If you were to walk through the downtown streets of Washington, D.C., you'd see a reflecting pool. You'd see a Washington Monument, a Korean War Memorial. You'd see a Martin Luther King Memorial. You'd see a National Archive. You could go into the National Archive and see the Constitution and see the Bill of Rights. What are these? These are monuments of remembrance. These are monuments of appreciation. Monuments of recognition. A place in which men and women of the future can reflect upon sacrifices and decisions of the past. We can walk by that reflecting pool and see the reflection of the Lincoln Memorial, the man who freed slaves. We can see the cherry trees as a token of peace given from Japan after we destroyed and annihilated their entire nation. We'd see the Washington Monument erected to have a place to remember one of the most pivotal men in the founding of our entire nation. So then I ask, do you have a statue of honor in your life? Is there something in which you can walk by and recall what Christ has done for you? Is there something you can hold, a place in which you can walk to reflect upon your commitment and the commitment of Christ. Can you hold that Bible in your hand as a statue of honor? Can you walk to an altar and reflect upon the decision you made to serve God with your life? Is there a church house that you hold dear because of the decisions you made for you and for your family, for the Lord in that place? Is there somewhere you can recall and say, it was this chair right here? See this white spot, this wet spot right here? They are from the tears of when I finally gave up to God. See this, this collar that I have around me from the, the tears sopping down my face? Were because there was a time where I realized how wicked and vile I was. And I needed a Savior and He agreed yes, what a day. to yes. save me. Amen. You need that place. Yes, you need to get you a statue of honor. Something you can look to and recall. All the sacrifices that were made, maybe by you, maybe by someone else, so that you can hold firm to your values. I've often wondered how our Congress can sit in session and see the many great portraits and the pillars 
formed around them. Staring them directly in the face. There's a portrait of Moses front and center in front of the Speaker of the House. If you look on TV and you see the, uh, I forget what it's called, but the chambers, I guess it is. The chambers as they sit there and they, they make all their votes. They got their red vote and their green vote and all their neutral vote and all that good stuff and where they sit. If you've ever been inside of that place, there's portraits all around. And there's portraits of different leaders from great lands and great nations. And how, the, how it, it stands for the principles in which we were formed as a great nation ourselves based off of principles of the sacrifices of other men. And the first one, front and center, all the portraits on the side are a side view. But there's one that is face forward, and it's directly in front of the Speaker of the House. And it's a picture of Moses. So they say the greatest lawmaker ever been alive, other than Christ himself, naturally. So, I've often wondered how they can do that. Just look at it. Moses staring them directly in the face while they pass such ungodly, unimaginable laws into acceptance. Such a dishonor to them, to that room, to the very capital in which was once burnt down and now sit in defiance of the freedoms it was afforded. Are we dishonoring our Savior by living in such a manner that we forget his sacrifices? He didn't have to die, you know. My battery's dying and everybody on the internet's going to lose me if I don't put this in, so forgive me. And then they'll be like, I didn't hear the end. It was a quick sermon this time. So are we dishonoring our Savior by living in such a manner that we forget his sacrifices? You know, some would say, and I could often support, well, well, that soldier died unnecessarily. Probably right. They made some mistakes, or our government made a mistake, or we should have never been there. Probably right. He didn't have to die. You're probably right. But now let's take that, put that aside for just a minute. And you know, Jesus didn't have to die for you either. Jesus didn't have to die for you either. But he chose to, willingly. Some of these great men and women chose to die to save that of the lives of others. And we thank God for them. Jesus chose to die for you on purpose, knowing you would spit in his face. Knowing you would deny him. Knowing that it would be all about you and never about him. And said, I'll still do it. So here's my challenge today. Here's my first question. Will you erect a place? Will you erect a memory? Will you erect a statue? Will you recognize in honor... The sacrifices made for you. And erect that place. I would spend some time at Arlington National Cemetery. I would spend some time reading stories about the prices men and women have paid. I would spend some time in your Bible and thank God for truths in which he has prescribed you and I. Yes. I would spend time in prayer and seek the one. There was only one right. that made you. Yes. And it wasn't right. mommy and daddy. Maybe you don't have any of these moments in your life. This do in remembrance of me. And so this is a Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend. There will be a time of reflection tomorrow. Hopefully there will be some time of reflection for you today. How much reflection can we give the ultimate one who died for us? The ultimate one who died for us. Is your life going to be any different tomorrow because of the sacrifices you recognize today? Are you just going to go about your norm? you just happy that we're out of church, you know, preacher's winding down, and boy, I'll get to go on home, and I'll get to, you know, I'll go hang out in the yard, or I'll turn on a TV channel, or maybe I'll watch a few YouTube videos, or man, I'll tell you, you know, maybe I'll just kind of cut the grass, or I'll just kind of rake the leaves. I'm going to beg God that if you won't give him attention, that he'll nag you, that he'll bother you, that you won't be able to sleep right until you finally give him the attention he deserves. Not so that he torments you, 
but so that you finally recognize and surrender to the only one, the only one that can afford you a true victory. Why? He died for you. Recognize it. Keep in remembrance what he's done for you. The soldier and Christ. The only two beings that have ever died for you. Let's stand together.